In this video, we're going to perform a derivation of a Maxwell relation starting from the Helmholtz energy. Now, the steps that we're going to follow here are going to be very similar to what we have already done for the internal energy and the enthalpy. So we'll go a little bit quicker than usual, uh, but we'll make sure that everything falls into place nicely. The first thing that we need is a fundamental equation for the Helmholtz energy, which we're going to obtain simply by looking at the definition of the Helmholtz energy. All right, so the definition of the Helmholtz energy is simply U minus TS, internal energy minus the product of temperature and entropy. Take uh, total derivatives, and that is going to be internal energy minus T differential of S minus S differential of T. Right, so now we invoke the first law of thermodynamics for a reversible process. Right, so that internal energy then turns into reversible heat and reversible work uh, with the provision that this work is only expansional work. That means that we're not doing any attempts at extracting work uh, that is not expansion. Okay, so this is only expansion work. Well, if that is the case, then we can uh, apply here the knowledge from the second law, the thermodynamic definition of entropy, and here expansion work minus T differential of S, minus S differential of T, as, and as how we have done in other uh, derivations for the, home, uh, for the uh, Maxwell relations, the external pressure is equal to internal pressure because in reversible processes you have mechanical equilibrium. All right, so that sets up a nice cancellation here, and uh, we arrive at the fundamental equation for the Helmholtz energy, which we're going to write at the top. All right. Then. Differential of the Helmholtz energy is equal to minus pressure differential of V minus entropy differential of temperature. Okay, very good then. So that is your fundamental equation, and that uh, tells you that it's nice to express the Helmholtz energy as a function of the volume and the temperature, and these are the natural variables, because that thermodynamic equation has a very nice, very compact way, right? It's very easy to see how those things are related. All right, so if you have the, the natural variables of the Helmholtz energy or the volume of the temperature, then you can set up here what the total derivative should be, the generic one, and then uh, you would arrive at the, at, the, at the following equation, right? So if you have two variables, the total derivatives will be the total deri deri derivative with respect to the first variable, plus the second, or the, the, the first derivative with respect to the second variable. Temperature with respect to volume, differential of T. All right, good. Uh, of course, what that means is that we know, comparing uh, this total de uh, derivative equation with the fundamental equation, the values of these partial derivatives that you have right here, and that will be useful when we set up uh, the Maxwell relation. All right, so let's set that up. Yeah, remember that the Maxwell relation exploit, exploits the fact that uh, Helmholtz energy is a state function, and that means that uh, uh, to calculate the changes from an initial state to a final state, the path doesn't matter, right? The only thing that you need to know is what is the value of, this, of the function at the initial step and at the final state, and that's all that you need. You, have no, you need no information about the path, or, or another way to say that is that the change to the function is path independent. And mathematically, what that means is the following, or the way that you can write it is the following, right? So it really, you can first maybe change the temperature, then the volume, or first the volume and then the temperature. It really doesn't matter how you want to do this. Right, so I'm going to write this here, and then uh, the other path down here, volume, temperature. All right, so let's uh, write that uh, in a little bit uh, of a more clear way. Uh, notice that what this means is that first you have to take the first derivative of the uh, Helmholtz energy with respect to volume, right? So, respect to volume at constant temperature, and then of that you have to take the uh, first derivative with respect to temperature at constant volume. Okay. And here again, the first derivative of the two would be with respect to temperature, constant volume. And then uh, the second one would be with respect to volume at constant temperature. 
All right. All right, so let's see what these things are. Notice that the first derivative of the half of energy with respect to volume and constant temperature, we have it right here. That is simply equal to the minus pressure, right? So that this expression turns into the following. Minus pressure. And this one, uh, this first derivative of the half holes energy with respect to temperature and constant volume, we have it right here. And from the comparison with the fundamental equation, we get that that is the minus entropy. So this is going to be the first derivative of the minus entropy uh, with respect to temperature, constant, uh, sorry, with respect to volume. Yeah, at constant temperature. All right, so these minus signs uh, are going to come out of these expressions. So we can put them right here. And then uh, these things have to be the same, right? So uh, again, that's the path independence quality of these state functions, right? So those negative signs, uh, once you make them equal to each other, will cancel. And you get uh, your third Maxwell equation, which we just derived from the Helmholtz energy constant volume. And the other one is going to be the partial derivative of the entropy with respect to volume at constant temperature. All right, so in the next video, we're actually going to take this, okay, which we have just derived from uh, the Humboldt's energy, and we're going to take a little bit of a deeper, uh, uh, we're going to have to take a, a, a little bit of a deeper look into uh, this uh, relation so that you can see uh, how useful this is. It turns out that these first derivatives can be nicely interpreted using experiments, right? So, so this has a connection to things that we can handle, things that are tangible. And we will see again what that is uh, in the next video. Uh, so again, uh, uh, the next, the plan for the next couple of videos is, is not going to be to just go to the next uh, Maxwell relation, which will be from the Gibbs energy. Instead, we're gonna take a, a little bit of, bit of a pause, analyze that to a little bit uh, of a, a, a higher level of detail, and then we will continue with the Gibbs energy.